Um, so other people are going to, to write and post uh, and do things to help honour Carlos's professional life. To me, that was too overwhelming because he, he had an amazing career. He did things with the NFL, of course, Adobe, Ansker. Um, when it came to, to mobile, he was he was really a pioneer. Um, and, and just Lanica and the NFL and Disney and all of these, these things. Um, and it's just a bit too much for me, but I wanted to, to write something for him. And so the way I'm, um, I'm doing that is, is an open letter. Um, a lot of people have asked me, and I've been very open about it here, uh, but of course a lot of you who knew us over the years wondered and have reached out uh, since his death. And um, I, I certainly don't mind being, being asked. I actually, uh, over the years, have always really liked it when people could see there was a bit more between us. Um, but because of my age, our careers, certain cultural pressures, uh, it had always been very, very much in, in the shadows. Um, but it, answering that is sometimes difficult. And if you're someone who's, who's messaged me and asked and I haven't replied, it's just because I'm, I'm, overwhelmed with grief right now um, and I'd just like to answer that clearly so no one is wondering and I, I can avoid having to to try and answer it over and over again because it it is very emotional for me and I'm not normally an expressive person at all I mean that's that's an understatement I really I don't tend to talk about or, or show my my feelings, uh, with the exception of, of work and being passionate about work. Um, so yeah, uh, Carlos and I were a couple. We were never a conventional couple, but on and off we were a couple over the past seven years. Uh, it was not some sordid sexual thing. Of course, that's a part of, of any loving adult relationship, but it, we had a lot of love, a lot of support between us. Uh, it, it was a much deeper emotional connection, and we were a lot more to each other than than just that, and that's, um, that's sort of how we, we survived over the years and stayed so close, whether there was a romantic element or not at any, any given time. But following a trip that we had booked for uh, right after his, his 50th birthday, um, then yes, we, we would have become a public couple. A lot of the, the obstacles and issues there no longer no longer existed so uh, I just wanted to get that that out of the way and do my little um my little open letter to him uh, I, I can't do his career justice I can't even do him as a person justice uh, th this is the closest I can can get okay Carlos I remember so well meeting you and I would love hearing you tell the story of how we how we met and the fact that it was, you know, the whole online thing, email, back in the game salad and corona days. And I, something in me, it just 
it knew it, it knew you were special and I, I thought this is crazy he's on the other side of the world why am I, am I even thinking these things how can there even be anything there because we hadn't even you know heard each other's voices at that point or the webcam or anything um you know I was what 19 then I think maybe I turned yeah 19 it, it in some ways it feels like it just happened and other ways it feels like it was just lifetimes ago and uh after that, obviously, it wasn't long before I I came over, and uh, I still remember you. You weren't in the office the first day. The second day, you were you were able to come in. And I remember. I remember every moment surrounding meeting you. I remember you. You. I'm sitting at the end of that row of row of desks and it's the first one when you come in the door and I didn't I I didn't act like I knew you'd come in but I, I heard the door over to my left and I knew it was you and I was I feel I'm not the sort of person who would say I get butterflies unless I was being sarcastic or cynical but um i just kind of froze because i did have butterflies and i i remember you coming around the side to my right and um and standing there and putting putting your arms out for a hug and i was embarrassed by how how obvious um I was when I I just kind of jumped at you and held you and felt you holding me so close and warm in this really big hug and you were wearing the uh, the very thin dark blue hoodie that uh, that you love and I really like that it just being so thin made it feel feel so much closer than if you know you've been in a, in a jacket or something it was really really nice and I I already before that I, I thought it was the case but it was that that moment that I knew I knew I was just completely in love with you and um, I remember later that night after dinner you um, you drove me drove me back to my hotel and we were talking and you said to me I believe the cosmos brought us together and I just it was such a moving thing to me I I still remember staring just sort of at this blank spot trying trying not to get get teary I would only ever get teary with you other people I know they the idea of me crying to most of them is pretty absurd but with you little things could um it could really really move me and often not in a sad way just I remember leaving at the end of that that first trip and you, you had to you had a dinner to go to that that night before I went to the the airport and you kept hugging me again and again as we were saying goodbye when I walked you walked you down you you would sort of hug me and would be saying goodbye again and you'd hug me again and I remember you telling me to think about what I really wanted because you wanted that too and it, it broke my heart leaving it was really bad um, and it's not it's not that I thought 
back then there was really a good chance of us working out. I just, it wasn't just that I was in love with you, I knew I loved you as a person, as a friend, as a mentor, as so many different things and I just needed to be near you, I needed to be able to love you, I wanted to make your life better, I wanted uh, a lot of things. Um, and after that we we spoke every every day we spoke every day for seven years me keeping strange hours probably helped when I was in Australia and I remember you know just thinking it's it's crazy that we could talk this much every day and I, I would think that every you know maybe a couple of times a month even and I have for the last seven years. It, it is amazing that we could talk first thing in the morning, last thing at night, and so much time in between every day and still not get sick of talking to each other or hearing about each other's days or managing to do that wherever we were in the world, even when we were with other people keeping that connection, the emotional connection and the friendship and the family and the love and just being there for for each other. It, I don't know how how we did that. I, I remember looking after all this happened and because I, I was thinking I, how can it be you know a week, how can it be two weeks since we've we've spoken and I still have in Skype the little chat from you know like 40 minutes before all this happened um, and I looked and we, we were swapping just typing not even voice but just typing like a, roughly half a million words every three months to each other I don't know how I'm even sort of functioning at all when when you know a week passes and two weeks pass um, I, I guess I'm sort of just trying to say that I I miss you and I'm I'm really grateful for the fact that we had that and that you would make that that effort because I know it was harder for you a lot of the time than me to to be there and to get online and to say good morning and wake me up and to say say good night and, and to make sure you know you always heard about my day and I always heard about yours and I know sometimes I I would get a little you would say piney piney like a dog I had separation anxiety I, I you know I'd miss you when you weren't about I just liked feeling connected and I, I think the way we we really did survive and not just survive but thrive over the years was we always kept that that one one rule and that's why it didn't matter when we couldn't be together like that because we had our special weird little thing we never let anyone come between us and I still remember the first time I mean I think the rule was always there unspoken I, I remember the first time we actually talked about it it was it was it was actually a really good day it could have been a little um a little messed up it was back when I was at Corona and uh, Walter Lou and David Randrell or whatever the hell his name was they called me into into that little meeting room or lunch room, the sort of the small one in the corner. And I remember quickly pocket dialing you because I knew what was gonna happen. I oh uh, and it, that was that was when they were there and they were sort of standing over me and trying to be all intimidating, like, yes, it's Peach, she's nice to everyone. And I remember you guessed that they were gonna do something like that. Because I attended your Lanaka launch, 
you were very good at guessing, guessing people, psychology. I already knew so much about it, but I learned so much with you, and I love that we both had that passion for the subject, and it was something we could uh, could share. I own so many, so many books you you recommended, not just on that, but on tech. I'm I'm really glad we had that. But um, I remember them saying to me that they wanted me to end the friendship with you, and. I don't know if they heard it and ignored it, but you were laughing and I could just hear it from my pocket, because I, I mean, it was, but of, of course, you know, that was never going to happen, and that, I remember I, I left early and we went to, to dinner and then back to my hotel, um, that, that was a really good night, I feel like the, I don't know, they made our bond stronger perhaps, but it let us for the first time ever actually talk about that role and that brought me a lot of comfort and I think you a lot of comfort over the years. I'm so grateful for that time in our life and for the sort of challenges and and tough spots that we we faced together there. Um, uh, sorry, obviously I'm, I feel all cried out, but it's a, talking to you like this and not having, not even having Skype dinging constantly interrupts me when I'm making a video. I never got mad when you did that and I kind of keep expecting it to, uh, to pop up at me and it to be you being like, Burb, give me attention. I always love giving you attention. I remember um, when I moved to California, spending that birthday with you. What was that? My 23rd? My 24th? That was my favorite birthday ever. And being able to go to breakfast a couple of times a week and being in the Lanaker office and being able to always sit with our feet touching under the under the table at the at the end there and eating lunch together every day and I used to like uh, I mean I only started eating breakfast properly because of, of you and the fact that what two or three a week we go for that was a lot of pancakes um, but then sort of snoozing after or napping at the office, which I could only do because you were right there, otherwise I'd never be comfortable enough. You know that I can't even sleep on planes. It was just, you were right there and I was peaceful and I didn't know that you were taking photos for a while of me asleep to make that collage. I, uh, I do wish we'd gotten to finish it one day, but I, I know it amused you anyway and, uh, I like that, um, but the, those days were so special to me, and the days that, you know, we go to breakfast and, you know, we wouldn't necessarily be up to being around other people, so we'd work, you know, back at my place or whatever, and I, I love the days where it, it dragged on a bit, like we would have our breakfast, we would go to my place and we would, would work, and then it'd be like, well, you know, I could leave, but it's lunchtime so how about we, we order food and then you know have have our lunch and keep on working and then it would get to the evening time it would be like well there's going to be traffic so we could we could just go out to to dinner and then you know I can go later and hey I really like those those days or your your keyboard addiction going to a Prize Electronics or um, Central Computers, that one, the one with all sort of the funny little bits and pieces. Um, I don't know how many keyboards you got over that last year. That and, or, or you know, how many pastries we ate from that little bakery. God, 
I, I did gain some weight then. Not as much as when you weren't eating properly for a while there because of your situation and I was worried about you losing weight and I've told a couple of people here who who really sort of like the story and I really like the story now it wasn't funny at the time because I was I got pretty chubby there um but when you when you lost that weight and I'm so glad I told you this the last time I was here I, I'm, I'm glad that, you know, I, I got to share it with you because it, it's funny, but it, it's loving as well. When, when you were losing weight to the point that your fingers were, you know, thinner, and I, I could see that, um, all of those days at the office for like two or three months were at almost every day at like five or six, which was so early for me to be eating dinner. For me to be like oh I'm hungry I feel like pizza so if I ordered one I don't want it to go to waste would you eat it with me and you'd be like yeah, yeah I guess okay who eats that much pizza no one eats that much pizza no one wants that much pizza especially that early every day and especially days we've had an okay lunch I'm not gonna be like three hours later oh I'm starving I really want pizza I couldn't look at pizza for like a year after that. I was like, oh God, I'm going to die if I eat another bite. But I gained 23 pounds in that period. And I still remember telling you that and you laughing your head off and me being like, you know, shut up. What other woman would love a man so much she would gain that much weight for him and force feed herself this pizza that she really doesn't want and is so sick of eating just because she was worried that he, he was he was getting a little bit too light <sighs> that that was one of my my favorite favorite things from the last last time i was here i did love that we could talk openly about more things and I could show you the little easter egg in uh, in my zombie app from what 2011 2012 where you touch the corner and it would say talking to you is the best part of my day if even back then it was I never got sick of talking to you it, no matter how many hours it was always just I don't know you were so much a part of me and it was and I, I remember over dinner uh, still back in California I was able to ask you sort of when when you knew that we were meant to be something and you said to me you you said, you knew, we both knew, we knew the, the moment we met because you recognized your Lucifer and I recognized my minion. We knew. And, and then you ordered a salad and got distracted. But it stuck with me and I realized I remember almost everything about our time together so perfectly and so many funny little things over so many years even though you would call me Minion and I would call you Lucifer I mean multiple times every day I don't remember when the names started I, I felt like it could have been that night but I really it's just the one thing I don't remember but I like that because I felt like it was that for you too, recognizing it in that that moment. And I, I know it was different then and I liked I like that you you looked at me you looked at me the same as you look at me now, the last time I was was here you know like a month and a half ago even though when we met 
I was obviously, you know, quite a bit younger and I, the only makeup I ever wore was maybe light eyeliner, nothing else. I hadn't had a haircut in, I don't know how many years. I had the ripped jeans and unflattering t-shirt and sneakers and I just mean I dress a little differently now but at least I uh, I guess I look a little more adult, a little more polished. I still look eccentric half the time but I'm fine with that. I like the fact that you uh, you spent so much time on on that and not for you it wasn't about how you wanted me to look and what you found attractive it was just trying to make me comfortable and confident and these things I was never really into before um, all of the makeup I'm wearing I still wear and get the same kind still is all stuff that you chose um, I, I don't get manicures uh, often anymore I did get my first one ever with you when I do get them and I get a color done I get the same purple the exact same shade of purple <coughs> that you chose during um during my first trip when I had my first manicure and I thought you were joking when you told me you really liked them and you'd get them all the time but that was that was really nice for me and <clears throat> I remember you teasing me so often but you I, I know you, you secretly liked it but you'd tell me off for being too obvious and you would say uh, Peach stop that stop looking at me like that a blind man could see you're in love with me from 900 billion light years away and I would always be a little bit embarrassed because I always felt like I, I was more obvious than you I, I really was um, at least when we were together I was more obvious than you I think the rest of the time you probably showed it a little more than I did um, but I I know you you secretly like that and that's why you would tease and I used to love it when people would say to me you know oh I think Carlos has a bit of a thing for you or something like that uh, someone once said to me after a, after a meetup we'd done they asked me you know does he have a bit of a thing for you and I just sort of shrugged it off and mumbled or something you know I wasn't gonna straight up lie and I you, you know we were in the same situation but they said to me I, I saw how he was looking at you and that made me really really happy um, I like the fact that neither of us could always hide it and being here and talking to people and, and talking to Kay who's been really supportive learning how much you talked about me when I wasn't here and the way that you know if I was offline for you know, longer than usual or at a, at a weird time, the fact that you'd really, really sort of flip out. Because, of course, I would do that about you, but I always felt a bit silly with it. Um, yeah, it, it was nice to learn that. There has been a lot of comfort from people here. It, it has helped, and I've thought about all the things that I'm, I'm grateful for, like, how many colleagues, especially when we weren't, you know, romantic for that whole time, obviously parts of it, but even the times we weren't, that when we were at Lanaka, every single day we would hug at the end of the day. I, I appreciated it at the time, I loved it at the time. I never until now 
realize just what a big thing that was and the fact that, you know, like if you were going with Doug and Bruno or whatever, or, you know, like giving someone a lift, you'd always sort of, you know, wait until they'd gone or whatnot out, out to the car or you'd go out and you'd come back in like you forgot something and you'd... I, it just didn't really click at the time, especially those where you'd come back or whatnot, that it's really special that we got to do that every day and I'm so grateful that you, you know, you made sure you really, you were very, very good to me in, in so many ways and I still remember the the day that my my idiot ex sent um sent a email with all the little you know the little comics that I would draw for you of Minion and Lucifer and our adventures and all of that I remember the day I was it's one of my favorite favorite memories of us my ex sent you know some of these comics to a few of our, our colleagues and you know I I figured out what happened because um, I of course use IP tracking on certain sites just because I have had issues with stalkers or you know weirdos like the X and so this way you know it, it would show and I, I got an alert because there was one on a lot of activity from one IP. So I, I I went and I looked and I saw it was a was a colleague and I was like, okay, this is this is weird. And from there I, I figured it all out. And uh, that that happened on a Friday night. It was the Monday and I'm in the office and you were so good. You were you were so good. You um. You had a had a meeting with two of them, and um. I was terrified that you were going to be mad at me. Um. I, I really I I thought you would be be mad. Not that it was my fault. Obviously, it wasn't. We all have stupid exes, but. You know, it, it it was a something that could have been really bad and really stressful, and I'm sure it was a stressful meeting for you. you as soon as they they left and that meeting was done, you didn't you didn't yell at me. You got me to come into a room and you just said, "Hey, you know, make sure if any of that's online that we we change it so it's it's password protected." Not that it was anything bad. It's such a stupid thing to. You know, it was silly little comments. But you didn't tell me anything that would stress me out. You you told me, you know, it's fine. We'll, we'll lock it down. Don't ask me why. Gave me a hug. Reassured me again it was fine. I, I love the fact that, that you did that. And, of course, there's the part of me that was, was just really really pleased that such a spiteful little idiot liked to go and try and sort of, you know, violate our, our one rule, no one comes between us, no one messes up the relationship, could, uh, could try and do that and actually bring us much closer together. I loved the fact that you looked out for me during that and you put my feelings first, even though it, you know, it was a stressful time and you didn't show that you were stressed, you just put me first. I really, I, I'm glad that we got to talk about it, you know, a year or two after that, where I, I could tell you that I knew what had actually, actually happened there, but I, there were so many things like that where I really, I didn't think I could love you more I didn't feel like it was possible, but then you'd do something like that and it would it would make me 
love you more. And now, missing you and missing all of that, I'm trying to find comfort in, you know, like I said, the makeup or the clothes or the attitude or the work ethic or all of these things that you, you put into me. Multiple people talking to me the last sort of, you know, since this, this happened have said, like, you know, you basically raised me, you basically created me, and that is true, you, you really, you really did, um, and it's been, it's been really hard, because of course you were in so many roles, I mean, you were often in a parent role, or a child role, or a best friend role, or, you know, we were sort of each other's, uh, I don't know, con confessors, confidants, rocks, we were, it, it's silly, it's like, um, it's like when you first said to me, it, it's normal to get emotional sometimes, uh, even over little hiccups we might, might have, um, and of course we were going to have them. You don't talk that much without without ever bickering. I love that we could never stay mad though, because we'd miss each other if we if we weren't talking. Um, I remember you saying to me that that was normal when you have a relationship that is as emotionally codependent as ours. And I have to I have to laugh at it because. How I feel like to other people that would not be a good thing. It would not be thrilled at the idea of com complete dependence on each other. But I never minded that because what we had just worked, and I was never, I was never not happy with you. And I love the fact that we could go and and you saying to me, you know, when we were in my hotel room or just just shut away from other people in my apartment or whatever that we were like totally different people and we really we were we in i mean we were but it was more we were just more ourselves there was more of ourselves that could be there there wasn't the worrying about you know, someone getting the wrong idea, or offending someone, or, oh, you know, sort of, well, but why is his arm around her, or why did she, you know, brush that off his face? I still remember multiple meetups where I went to brush something off your face, like an eyelash or whatever, and you're like, oh, peach, no. And, I, and it would take me a second to do that and try and evaluate what was normal, acceptable behaviour and what wasn't, or that, that was hard, I mean, it was okay, we managed, but it did, it made it, it made the difference more obvious when, um, when we were alone, and, um, I really, I, I used to think I leaned on you more than you leaned on me, like, when I went to Barcelona, I needed a, sort of a surrogate to keep a, keep an eye on me, make sure I ate and didn't, you know, get lost and confused and forget to eat and end up freezing or boiling or not having a jacket or all the little things that you would, uh, you would be so, so good about. Um, so I, I never minded that. And it's hard for me that the last 18 months for you were, um, were as tough as they, they were. I know you were going through a, a lot of things, but the fact that you could be open with me and you could let me help to support you financially. Um, and I know you would have gone and gotten a job. I know that's what you were going to do, but you were working on amazing technology and I didn't want that for you and I mean I knew you would pay me back but it, it, it gave me the chance to really show my support for you 
show my love for you in a different way. It's a lot easier to, to show love and support when a person is, you know, going through a normal, normal time. And you going through a hard time, let me do that. I, I've never had a proper, you know, joint bank account with anyone. No one has as much information about my finances as you do. And you trusting me enough to share those things with me made me very proud. You letting me help you made me very proud. And the fact I could trust you that much, I'm really glad that, that I, I had someone in my life I could, I could have that with to that level you know and it took us a lot of years to to get to that and I guess the trust was built up over over just so many little little moments bonding moments you were the first person to tell me that it was okay to cry and I was 25 and I, I thought about that the other day when I was laying here and crying and missing you and thinking about everything that's happened. Um, and I love that, that you would be like that because I know you almost never, never cried. The fact you'd tell me it's okay to cry that was such a big, big thing to me. Um, and the way you would joke that I didn't sleep at night when you had a bad day. So I'd just stay up all night thinking of ways to try and try and make you happy, try and make the next day better for you. I like the fact that even though you'd, you'd joke and tease, you knew that that's what happened. I didn't sleep when you had a bad day. I couldn't sleep, especially, you know, when you were in Miami and, and I was over on the West Coast. I was too worried I wanted to be there when you woke up. I know you'd, you know, wake me up otherwise, but I just wanted to be there already to try and start your day in a happy way. And, and I love that when we were apart, I mean, I know you did it before that, but especially then the fact that you would, would send me t-shirts on a regular regular basis because you knew I couldn't I couldn't stand the idea of not being not being able to smell you because to me you you smelled like home and happy and warm that's what what you smelled like and I even still have the this one here which I have had with me uh, all all week, and of course, droidy. I have droidy. I like playing catch with droidy back in the office. I really, you know, it was just a simple thing, but it was like our feet always touching under the table. It was just, it was one of so many things that that made up our our weird little sort of life and our I think it's like um, being in so many roles and so much love I explained it to you recently as um, before I met you I missed you and people people say that like a romantic thing sometimes I don't mean it romantically at all. I mean, there's, there's that part of me, but it's not that. It's it's that you fit these very particular needs that I had always had that I didn't think I would ever find someone who could who could fill those needs, and I was okay with that. But I still felt felt that that hole and. I can't even really articulate what it was. I just know that the 
darkest part of me that I'm not comfortable sharing with people. The, the few weird little, little deep dark parts of me. You were my perfect counterpart. We could talk about anything and I, I do think we did recognize that in each other and it was it was so amazing for me to find that I I never I never thought I would find that and finding it in you the way that we did it it was it was amazing and and that's why even though I wish the last 18 months had been better for you I um I take a little comfort, not that I feel like it was paying you back for being that to me, but I guess I'd always wanted you to see just how much I loved you because I don't think you felt it, it was possible for a long time. And knowing that the last 18 months with stuff going on let you see just how devoted I was, just how much I loved you, that I was not going to abandon you, I wasn't going to go anywhere. You could tell me if you were sad or scared or worried and I knew that you were really private about that stuff but I mean having spoken to people since this happened I honestly don't know if you ever said that to anyone else and I know you, you never said to to anyone else that, you know, you they kept you sane and you couldn't function without them, you couldn't survive without them, what, what would you do? I always appreciated you saying that to me, but I, the, I appreciate it so much more now that you're not here. Um, because you, the way our roles were, you normally were the, maybe a little less lately because I felt such a, a desire and a need to take care of you and I've always been really protective, but you overall seem like the stronger one in the relationship and that worked for us, but since you haven't been here hearing hearing those things recently or the last, you know, couple of years that you, you couldn't function without me, especially that because um, it, it stops me from feeling weak when right now <coughs> right now I, I do have a lot of time that I feel like I'm not, I'm not able to function because you're not here. Um, this part I wrote down because I knew I would get choked up and I'm hoping reading it I can get through this without, without really crying, um, even if I teared up once or twice, so. You were the greatest love of my life and the time that we spent together, whether we were talking or being intimate or laughing, eating, commiserating, I don't regret a single second that we spent together, even if I was getting up early and it was still dark and I was going 40 minutes to meet you for breakfast, I'm so glad I did that every single time. And I wouldn't do it for anyone else. I hate mornings. I don't get up that early. I feel terrible early in the morning. But I did it every single time for you. Even when it was like really short notice. And I had like 20 minutes to get dressed. And you know get showered. And make a 15 minute trip. And some, somehow you know. I'd only be 5 minutes late. And we'd have our breakfast. And I'd. Your love and your guidance and your support, the fact that you learned, especially sort of the last 18 months, 
to reassure me when I needed it without me even having to ask you. I was so proud of that. I know it wasn't easy for you to, to learn how to do that. I know it wasn't and you put that effort in and you would reassure me without any any hint from me that I I needed it. People talk about soulmates and counterparts. You truly were mine. You were my other half and um, without you here I can never again be complete. There's always going to be a huge piece of me that's missing. But you did put your best parts into me and your best parts were amazing and enough to go on and do great things. Like, I know you always wanted for me. I know you always wanted that for me. I told you a few months ago that I would always see you as my husband. Even if we never got to be a normal couple, because we were too intertwined for me to feel to feel otherwise and we marveled at how we found each other across the, the world, built a life, unconventional as it was, and how I'd been the sort of the one constant in your life for such a long time and given you your safe place and I, I couldn't be more proud of that. And you did that for me as well. And I remember saying to you, you know, we should remember that when we're having sort of dark days that somehow, and this was only like a week before you died, but somehow amongst everything, we found each other. And even if not in a normal way, we got to be together for years we had our special weird little relationship and that it never mattered how bad it got because so long as we had each other we could get through anything. The fact that was so soon before you, you died is incredibly, incredibly sad now because I, I don't feel like I can, can get through certain things without you but I'm glad one of us obviously had to die first and I used to, and you know this, I used to always hope it would be me because I couldn't imagine going on without you. I f it felt like one of those times that a person just couldn't couldn't go on that there'd be so much grief that they would just die and that was the one selfish thing for our, our time together that I had I really I didn't want to keep going if anything happened to you and I hope we would both live to be very old but now I I realized since this has happened that I'm I would give anything for you to still be here but if one of us was gonna go first I I know as much pain as I'm in and as much as I would do almost anything to to not be missing you every second. I'm really glad that it's me and not you who is who is going through this and who who is mourning and I, I've been trying to focus on that as a as a comforting 
or something because I would never want you to suffer and it would it, it would kill me it would be if something comes after and I like to think it does and you know you can see me then you see the few people who were close to you beyond me being very supportive of me most of them are being very supportive of me and very kind um, the, you know David and Maribel and Kay and June I know you would laugh at, at some of that because we didn't meet earlier and that was our rules and stuff but I guess I'm just I'm, I'm glad that you never had to deal with with this this level of and I know you dealt with a lot of things I just I don't know there's something about your counterpart not being there <sighs> okay I need to wrap this up because I'm gonna get very teary otherwise and I I feel like I've run out of tears but without you here it's this constant swing of okay I feel like maybe I'm coping okay and then just kind of breaking down and it's a, I know it's a grieving process and I know what you'd tell me and I'm not wallowing, I'm eating, I'm, you know, showering and getting dressed and not always really leaving the hotel room that much, but if I, if I get really sort of slobby and stuff, I mean, this makeup, it's the makeup you chose stays on pretty well, but my eyes do tend to get red and I get very, very sniffly and old. I, I don't want to deal with people. Yeah. So, okay. The last note that I wrote you, I told you my heart would always belong to you in this life and the next and that hasn't changed and I will do my best to live up to the life that you wanted for me to get the things you wanted me to have to have fun and be crazy and party and work harder than any sane person but for stuff that you know we as entrepreneurs always always wanted that we're passionate about but I love you and there will never come a day that I don't despair at the fact that you're not here with me or long to feel your arms around me and to smell you and kiss your neck and whisper that you're everything to me you, you always looked out for me you always took care of me and guided me and loved me. I can't do you justice with a letter like this, but I believe you would love the tribute and be glad that even though we didn't get to be a normal couple, that I'm proud of our pseudo marriage and I I'm proud of our love. I'm proud of the fact you love me, so proud of the fact you love me, and I'm proud of, of our love, the fact that, that I love you as much as I do, and I'll carry that openly in my heart and on my arm uh, for the rest of my life, every, every day, and the ring, the, the ring's never coming off my ring is going anywhere um, I, I just love you I loved you from the moment we met and I, I knew from that moment that 
I would spend my whole life loving you. You you truly were my life's best part and I'm grateful that I was yours and there was was never a day that I didn't thank God or the cosmos or whatever you, you sort of want to say. Never a day I didn't thank God that you were mine. I was grateful for you every day. I, I told you a lot of days and there were days I, I didn't. I, I know neither of us were were that mushy, but every every day. I, I don't know if anything comes after, but if it does, I, I hope from there, I mean, I know that you know I loved you a lot, and I love that the last conversation we had in person when I was concerned about some stuff going on for me and I, I just I had to make sure. I I still remember the, the last thing I, I said before we, we hugged goodbye when we were sitting there and I and I told you just I need to know if anything happens to me, I need to know that you know just how much I love you. And I'm, I'm so glad that was the conversation, and I'm so glad I was looking at you when I said it because I was emotional and it was hard to be be looking at your face. I wanted to look down because I did feel myself tearing up, but I, I could see that you you knew or you knew as much as you could know. But if something comes after, I like to think that you can see just how deep my love for you is and always has been. I know it took a few years to, to really sort of get that it wasn't some crush or infatuation or you were my home and my family and my whole life and I, to, to me, you were perfect. I, I know you didn't, didn't believe me when I would tell you that, but you, to me, you were perfect. There wasn't a thing wrong with you. And I'm going to spend the rest of my life missing you, but trying to keep making you proud and hoping that one day, whatever comes next, we're, um, we're reunited there, and my heart can be whole again. <laughs>